I recently got it into my head that I wanted to build the ultimate five-inch freestyle quad. So I naturally turned to the mad scientist himself, Chris Rosser, and his AOS 5 version 2 frame that has been designed to keep frame resonance vibrations at a minimum. I also chose to go with the motors and the flight stack that Chris recommends. I purchased the frame from iFlight together with the motors. The package included a lot of TPU parts such as a GoPro mount and arm protectors, etc. Interestingly enough, there was no assembly instruction in the package. So let's see if we can figure this out. The first thing you need to do is to install the stack screws since you can no longer access those from the bottom of the frame once everything is assembled. I put the ones for a 30 millimeter stack by mistake and had to remove them and screw in the ones for a 20 millimeter stack instead. Then attach the arms to the bottom bracing plate with the countersunk screws going from the bottom up. Oh right, should be the other way around. Then put the base plate into place and screw down using the standoffs. There we go. Then install the front and back brace pieces for the arms with the screws going from the bottom up screwing into the standoffs. Then install the camera mounting plates. Then finally put the top deck into place. All done. Let's install the motors. As hinted earlier, I went with the iFlight Shing 2 all black motors as per Chris's recommendation, but also since I have always liked the Shing motors. I first installed the TPU arm protectors and then used the somewhat longer motor screws that were supplied with the frame to secure the motors. Note, there are only three motor screws used per motor on this frame, but Chris assures us that this should be enough. Okay, motors installed. Looking good. Black and sleek. Let's move over to the electronics. I specifically wanted AM32 firmware on the ESC since tests have shown that AM32 is currently the best ESC firmware available, so I purchased the Skystar's F7 Mini Pro Stack that has the 55 amp AM32 ESC. The ESC is 20x20, 20 20, but it is very large, much larger than normal 20x20 20 20 ESCs. Okay, let's see here. Yep. The ESC is so big that it will be difficult to mount something in both the front as well as the rear position in the frame. The flight controller is also 20 by 20, but it looks tiny on top of the ESC here. I ended up mounting the ESC and the flight controller backwards. This was the only way I could get the Vista installed since the antenna cable would not have been long enough if I had mounted the Vista in the front. It was still a really tight fit. And the cable from the Vista to the Nebula camera that runs under the ESC is just barely long enough. I actually had to mount the camera upside down to make it work. The Skystar's F7 Mini Pro is a really full-featured stack with a barometer, 16 megs of flash storage, and a lot of spare UARTs. I connected the Vista using the plug and then soldered up the Express LRS diversity receiver mounted in the front stack position and the GPS mounted on the back arm. All done. 386 grams without action cam and battery, and 710 grams all up weight with the Insta 361R and a 1300 milliamp battery. On to the configuration. The ESC came with AM32 version 1.88. I updated that to 1.91, the newest available for this ESC. I set the correct KV of the motors and increased the beeper volume using ESCconfigurator.com. All of the other settings like variable PWM frequency and the timing advance was already set up from the factory. I then proceeded to update the flight controller to Betaflight 4.4 using the custom defines for the OSD messages, the barometer, and the flash storage. Since I mounted the ESC and flight controller backwards, I also had to change the gyro rotation and use the reorder motor feature in Betaflight to map the motors correctly. I applied the Express LRS 250Hz preset as well as the very clean build with RPM filters preset as a starting point. So let's tune this thing to the max. I followed Chris's recommendations and turned off all gyro filters except for the RPM filter and the dynamic notch filter while also running a single D-term static low-pass filter. It should be possible to turn of the dynamic notch as well, but I have not yet dared to do that.
The noise plots look fairly clean. A bit more noise on pitch compared to roll, but this is mostly just motor noise, and the RPM filter takes care of wiping that out nicely. As for the PID tune, I was able to push the master multiplier all the way up to 1.85, but I backed it down to 1.75 just to be safe. The PD balance is already spot on, so the only other thing I changed was to set feed forward to 1.5 and enable dynamic idle. How does it fly then? The weather has unfortunately not been cooperative, but I got a few flights in at least. The roll looks good. No overshoot nor undershoot. Pitch also looks good, but I'm saturating the motors when coming out of the move. So is this the ultimate freestyle quad? It does indeed fly very well. I'm not too happy with the Nazgul props, so I will test some of my favorite gem fan props and some ethics props instead. Let's compare the AOS 5 to the Nazgul 5. The O3 version of the AOS 5 Bind and Fly is currently around 18% more expensive than the O3 Nazgul 5 on the European iFlight store. The CADEX Vista version of the AOS 5 also seems to be around 18% more expensive than the Vista version of the Nazgul 5 at GetFPV. Yes, if you're going to be paying 500 bucks or more for a FPV drone, then you should really get the AOS 5. The only complaint that I personally have is with the XT60 connector that is coming out of the top deck. The battery leads make it hard to get the action camera mounted at the correct angle. I will likely have to look at getting a better 3D printed camera mount. Or should I perhaps get the GoPro 11 Mini instead? What do you think?